My job today is just to do a, a bit of an overview of, of the pathway, uh, some of the demographics and concerns and, uh, that we have about a pathway and, and to help you through this. To begin with, we have seven vascular surgeons in, in, uh, in the province. We have five in Saskatoon and three in, in uh, Regina. And the two tertiary major sites are obviously Regina and Saskatoon. Now, over many years, multiple healthcare members have tried to develop a, a lower extremity pathway, in particular a diabetic foot pathway, to no avail. And I think some of you may or may not remember that there were certain provincial pathways started in the later 2000s. And we were fortunate to have our application be successful for the development of a Saskatchewan lower extremity pathway in, I believe, the fall of 2013. And at that time, uh, with the success of the provincial pathway and the government back, and we developed an impl implementation team, and I was fortunate enough to, to be involved as a co-chair with Dr. Tessa Lobsher, who you'll hear from later, who is one of our uh, uh, general practitioners here in Saskatoon and very involved in diabetic health and healthcare teaching. And, and so we had a meeting in the fall of 2013 with multiple, with our implementation committee, with multiple providers throughout the province from Northern Health, Rural City Health, Social Services. We had patient advocates and developed a, a plan to develop this pathway. We developed subcommittees that all of us sit on. And uh, at this point, we have regular meetings with our subcommittees. The co-chairs have a twice monthly meeting with the government as well to help develop our programs. So a lot of work has gone into this. We've also met nationally and internationally with other groups. It's interesting to know that Saskatchewan is one of the leaders in lower extremity pathway uh, development. Um, we spent some time internationally. The major international group that has started such a, a program is called ILEGX, I-L-A-G-X, started in Europe, mainly in England. And we spoke with them many times and met with them at uh, international meetings to discuss their plan, their program, and how it may help us to develop our own. So that's sort of a, a brief background. And so the Saskatchewan Lower Extremity Pathway was started in two 2013 and, and developed along. And, and uh, our whole plan is to, to standardize, and you're going to hear that word a lot today, standardize and improve the management of, of uh, lower extremity wounds, in particular venous ulcers, or stasis ulcers, arterial ulcers, the diabetic neuropathic foot ulcer, meaning a diabetic patient can have perfectly normal pulses and have ulcers, as you know, or a mixed bag. It does not include bed sores, and unfortunately, we're getting a lot of calls about bed sore issues, but we, we draw the line there. So why do we have a pathway? Well, there is a tremendous number of high uh, or acute care interventions, as you know roughly somewhere around 189 to 190 major limb and foot amputations are done in Saskatchewan by vascular surgeons in a year. And just so that you remember, the average healing, if it's going to heal of a toe lesion, is about 100 to 150 days. The average healing, if it's going to heal of a heel lesion in patients with diabetic foot or peripheral arterial disease is somewhere around 300 to 350 to days with appropriate management. So this is chronic wound management. We have roughly 6,000 days of hospitalization for diabetic foot wounds and roughly 1,700 days in the province for venous stasis or stasis wounds. So we're dealing with a, a, a real problem, and as we're all aware in our hospitals, the, uh, in Saskatoon Health Region, we're running at anywhere uh, well over 100 patients for long-term care in our acute care facilities. We have no idea how many ER visits or home care hours are spent, because it's difficult to gather that data, and being a member of a tertiary site, uh, we find it more difficult enough to uh, handle our own data, let us know how much out there that we're not seeing as being appropriately dealt with. So we have quite a problem. We're quite involved, uh, in the Vascular Surgical Group is quite involved with another initiative called the Saskatchewan Surgical Quality Assessment. And there we are developing tools to, uh, for data, and these patients all fit into that program. So we have two programs that hopefully will mix by eHealth. 
and uh, although it is a, a difficult thing to, to develop. And the good thing about that program is we also have patient input and quality assessment from the patient. And so another reason for the pathway is the growing problem. And one of these is in regards to diabetes. And on this slide, you can see it's not a downward or a straight line trend in terms of our stasis or venous wounds. It's, it's a, a rising line. But the other more important part of this is that we have the incidence of diabetic foot ulcers is roughly 7%, which is really quite high. And of that 7%, 50% of patients with diabetes will develop a diabetic foot ulcer infection which may or not be treated successfully, but 50% will over their lifetime. And it results in somewhere around a 10 or 15% form of amputation, whether it's toes or major limb amputation. And for us, a major limb amputation is defined as below the knee or above the knee. So it's a very, very significant problem. We have lots of clinical challenges. We have inconsistent, inconsistent access to wound care services. Primary care providers lack information about local, or tertiary, regional resources for wound care prevention. It's a very difficult problem to try to coordinate all these issues, and particularly with the lack of very good IT, which is one of the main focuses I can tell you with our lower extremity pathway is to try to develop appropriate IT access at all sites. And unfortunately, there's a wide variation in treatment plans and referral patterns for wound care. Who should get referred to what level, the primary to secondary, secondary to the tertiary? Can it all be dealt with, with locally as well? It's difficult to know. We've had national conferences about what antibiotics to use. We've spent time with our infectious disease personnel here in Saskatchewan, plus nationally, uh, to develop protocols for appropriate antibiotics so we do not have people winging it in terms of what antibiotics and these protocols you'll see later on. What about treatment patterns and wound care? Well we've met nationally uh, which was a very entertaining meeting with a large teleconference right across the country. We had everybody involved including Quebec uh, and we found out interestingly enough that soap and water still works very well but unfortunately it's difficult to plan appropriately at all the different levels with primary, secondary, and tertiary care. So protocols have been developed to try to prevent variation. And this is one area where variation is not good in terms of lower extremity uh, care. Again, it was very interesting to find out that the national experience in developing uh, a, a provincial lower extremity pathways is really quite minimal. Saskatchewan is leading the way in this, which was uh, nice in some ways. So we, we use some national policies that have been developed to develop our own protocols. So in terms of prevent, uh, uh, potential benefits uh, to our providers, well, the word standardization. So it makes it easier for you, whether you're a physician, nurse practitioner, or wound care specialist, or our home care nursing team, so or social services team. If we have protocols, uh, this will make it easier for you. We're trying to develop tools for collecting and sharing information. And to be quite honest, this is a very difficult process. Uh, the IT involved. For example, we were sent uh, uh, just the, I'll send you a picture of a wound by iPhone. Well, as a vascular surgeon, I'm only in my office one day a week. I'm not there to receive that. And so do we have a, 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 a place where we, uh, I was going to say suppository, but <laughs> uh, do we have a place that we can store this information? We're working on that. Uh, we're really trying to do that, and this will, be, this will be the future. Appropriate IT is the future of making this thing work. And capacity building for our wound care teams uh, we, with our subgroups, uh, re, uh, uh, meeting when needed, uh, where hopefully we'll maintain uh, all the appropriate standardized protocols for you. Uh, what about specialist referral? This has become a, a uh, this is a big deal. And when we started the program, we felt that it was most, the best thing for us to do is, for example, if you have a hole in the foot, the vascular surgeon should see it. And then from there, with our standardization of protocols, we can work our way through. And this is much more difficult for peripheral arterial disease ulcers or 
uh, diabetic foot ulcers as it is opposed to stasis or venous ulcers, uh, which we'll get into later. And what about timely access to, uh, to appropriate specialists? This can be very, very difficult. Um, I'll, as I'll get into a little bit later, we in our tertiary clinic in Saskatoon, we were the first to get up and running uh, almost two years ago and it went from zero to, as you'll see, 350 visits a month. And uh, it's, it's an it's a unbelievable um, quagmire about how we handle all of this and, there's, and, and we're not handling it, uh, all the ones that we should. But we did decide that if you have a hole in the foot, you most likely should see a specialist. The Regina Clinic as a tertiary site is now up and running and uh, is, uh, is coming along quite nicely under the, uh, the uh, directorship of Dr. Don McCarville in Regina. What about the potential benefits for the patient? Well, I think that's quite obvious. If we have standardized protocols, standardized treatment, hopefully will improve the care and, the, and try to remove the issue of amputation. And we know, and this is fact, that if we have appropriate lower extremity pathway clinics in dealing with the diabetic foot or peripheral arterial disease ulcer in the foot, that we will reduce major limb amputations by 50%. So you can just imagine the cost saving that goes along with that. We do not reduce toe or transmed amputations. We do reduce major limb amputations. And there's a, a good distinction for that. For resources for patient education, this is now being developed. Dr. Tessa Lobsher has is, is, uh, certainly been involved with this. We also have uh, hopefully some new meetings coming up with our First Nations group to develop um, prevention clinics, which is obviously one of the major words here in terms of preventing these issues and trying to avoid the hospitalization uh, and hopefully improve faster healing. As I said before, the healing process is slow for patients with diabetic foot ulcers or peripheral arterial disease. So along with the Saskatchewan Quality Surgical, uh, Surgical Initiative, we're hoping that we will combine these two uh, areas of government and, and uh, physicians in order to improve not only patients' education, but our own as well. If we look at what are we seeing and what are you seeing, um, and this is quite standard, venous ulcers, and venous ulcers is probably not the correct word, it's venous and stasis ulcers because the majority of patients that we see with so-called venous ulcers are actually stasis ulcers more related to lymphatic issues as opposed to vein issues. But there's the mix in there and that varies from the location. At a tertiary site we're probably running about 40 percent of our patients uh, have stasis issues and we struggled with this one in terms of if you have a hole in the leg you should see a vascular surgeon or the tertiary site and we sort of work on that principle, but this is one group where we decant off to our wound care specialist if we can immediately. The, after the first visit, we're hoping that we don't have to see these patients very as much as we do with the diabetic foot or peripheral arterial disease ulcers. So in our tertiary site, we're seeing probably 40 to 60 mix between the stasis ulcers and the diabetic foot ulcers. In our Saskatoon clinic, uh, we have four half days a week in our ambulatory care. If we look at any international and some of the national clinics that are following our plan, they are four half days a week. We involve, and as I mentioned before, we're about 350 visits a month. We see roughly somewhere between 12 and in some clinics 30, but we're trying to uh, make that reduced patients in a, in a half day. And we're very structured here because we just have the half day because some other group is taking over right after us. So it's, it's a difficult thing to put in new patients. And this is why we say 350 visits. Uh, we are seeing these patients, we have to see these patients routinely, particularly the diabetic or the peripheral arterial disease patients. So it's not patients, it's patient visits that is so important. We have at any given time 300, just from the Saskatoon group, 300 patients with home care. And at any given time on our vascular ward at St. Paul's Hospital, we have probably eight vacs going uh, in our, in our uh, uh, vascular peripheral arterial disease patients. So I like to just 
go into some pictures here and, 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 and here we have just to talk about some things that then can occur. And here you see your classic diabetic foot and the points I want to make here is you can see the redness around that ulcer. The actual ulcer started at the base or on the bottom of that fifth toe and you can see the big callus. And if that callus would have been pared down, this wouldn't have happened. If that person would have been hopefully put into some orthotics, this wouldn't have happened. You can see the clawing of the toes and the prominent metatarsal foot pad and I know you all realize that part of the foot wasn't meant to walk on so if we could get some orthotics wouldn't that be nice. In our Saskatoon clinic we have Sask abilities come on one of those half days usually on the Friday clinic to see patients so we try to schedule patients in for Sask abilities to see. So we get the injury, we get infection. This, by the way, needs to be treated by the vascular surgeon. This is not a, uh, uh, this is a cellulitis and a full thickness right through the joint infection. This is a bad hole in the foot requiring actual surgery. This is the classic stasis problem that you see. We don't mind seeing this patient uh, uh, um, uh, at least once, uh, but again, we tend to decant off to our wound care specialists, whether it's and our home care nursing team uh, to look after these. Uh, we must make sure that they have pulses, as you know, and we'll find out if your ankle brachial index is above 0.7, uh, then compression is fine. Uh, but these are much easier ulcers to, to look after, and the concern always is cellulitis, but with compression that tends to improve. And finally, here we get into the really bad infection. And uh, this one is a, is a good slide because this patient actually is 37 years of old, old and came into the hospital in sepsis and actually died on the operating table because of that foot left too long. And by the way, that's a cowboy boot injury. And so the idea of about proper foot, foot gear, uh, talking to the patient and, and telling, them about, telling them about appropriate foot management, about moisturizers to keep the skin supple, about wearing wider shoes, which you're all going to learn about, uh, to prevent the pressure points on the first or the fifth toe. Um, and it's just amazing what patients will walk around with before they'll come and see you or come and see the primary health, uh, health provider before they get to us. But again, this is a serious foot infection. I'll always like to show this one to the medical students because you look at the top of the foot, but in the actual fact, it's the, the right-hand picture or the bottom of the foot that is the most, uh, was what's the one that started my heart beating more quickly uh, because this tells me there's a complete full thickness uh, death of all tissue underneath. This is the beginning of gas gangrene or neck fash as well. And, and so in summary, uh, I welcome you to this inaugural event. Um, uh, we hope that this program will continue to develop. Uh, we know we have an election right now, but that's all right. We have our program up and going, and we have a very dedicated team at all levels. Our subgroups and implementation team is very dedicated, and we think this can really work.